Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Fitton Center for Creative Arts. My name is Ian McKenzie Thurley. I'm the executive director here, and it is a great pleasure to welcome you all here to the steps of the Fitton out here on Monument for the dedication of Baroque trajectory. Uh, a lot of conversation being happening out on these steps for about a year. Uh, we have lost our blue baby. She's gone to college, um, in-state tuition, full ride. We're very happy she's going up to Miami University. We really like to thank our partners up there uh, at the uh, Art Museum at Miami University in Oxford. Uh, it's great to have that partnership. Uh, speaking of partnerships, bringing this today uh, has been um, a great uh, amount of conversation, uh, but it's been very, very easy to put together with our partners at Pyramid Hill Sculpture Park uh, and with City of Sculpture to make this happen today. We really appreciate uh, everything they've done to make this happen today and to, um, to encourage um, the arts here in Hamilton and encourage that, those partnerships that are ongoing. It's a really wonderful thing. It's an easy thing in Hamilton. Nothing's easy as it would seem, but these kinds of conversations start very quickly and we're able to develop these partnerships. And I am very grateful for that. And I think uh, we all are in the people to bring this arts, this kind of art, uh, and these kind of amazing colors to the streets of Hamilton uh, does a lot for us all. So thank you very much to my partners and we'll talk to them in just a little while. I do have to say some thank yous. Uh, and as I introduce very soon, our partners there uh, at Matandi Steel and JM Linrose uh, for uh, this event today and for bringing in Michael Post. So thank you very much, I appreciate that. <laughs> to High Street Cafe, thank you for uh, uh, the, the lovely goodies that we're gonna get after, the, uh, after we hear a few people talk. Uh, and to the Marriott here, the Courtyard by Marriott, uh, who are putting up our guests of honor. So thank you very much. Again, these partnerships. Um, for us uh, here at the Fitton Center, we're really trying to change things up uh, after the Blue Baby. Uh, and we really wanted to find something that when, if we zigged before, we zagged this time. And finding this piece, we sat down with City of Sculpture, we sat down with Pyramid Hill and trying to find a piece um, that was complementary to the space. And I really have to thank Kat May, who is our head of exhibitions here, because she is the one that placed the plinth here originally with the baby uh, in a fantastic piece with the sun, with the background of the building and the light behind it. Um, we really wanted to find that right next piece that we'd made a statement with the blue baby before, but we really wanted to go in a different direction. And finding this piece, not only its color, its style, obviously its background and history, which we'll talk more of today, um, and its connection to here in Southwest Ohio. It really just ticked all the boxes and it looks magnificent. Uh, it looks resplendent in the sunshine. And as you take time throughout the day, the sun hits it on different angles and morphs uh, in its shadows across the, uh, across the pavement here. And we really enjoy that. And we hope the people of Hamilton do too. So I would like to, uh, I'd like to introduce next uh, is Mr. Matt Fearman uh, from J.M. Lynn Rose. He's over here. Uh, J.M. Lynn Rose and uh, Matandi Steel, our sponsors of the end today. Uh, I know that, the, that, our, um, that our esteemed guest and uh, artist, they've already been talking. Uh, they've been talking steel and beams, uh, things I know nothing about, uh, which I really enjoyed seeing them get together and having that conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Fearman. Uh, I am Matt Fearman. I'm here from Matandi Steel and J.M. Lynn Rose. And uh, let me just say, I'm very thankful that we were just asked to be a sponsor and that I wasn't asked to be on the selection committee for this piece because I can't honestly imagine what it was like to sit down in a boardroom after you have a blue baby hatching out of an egg, sitting out in front of your building and trying to figure out what you're gonna come up with next. Uh, but obviously they didn't need my input because I think Ian and his team nailed it. Uh, the piece is fantastic and uh, excellent job on the selection. Um, the sculptures in this plaza have really kind of taken on a new meaning for my family in particular. Uh, living in the city of sculpture, we're surrounded by sculpture and art and murals and all kinds of different pieces on a daily basis and I think you kind of start to take it for granted. And uh, it wasn't until the blue baby came into this space where all of a sudden my kids are looking out the window going, what is that? And talking about it and discussing uh, what it represents or why is it blue or why is it in an egg? 
um, and conversations about art that we had never had before. Uh, but that was an easy piece to talk about. What I think was really amazing is when this piece showed up and we're driving by in our car and all of a sudden my kids are looking at it and having conversations about this piece. And that's what I really uh, admired and came away with is that now we're having conversations about uh, color and size and scale and what's it made of and why is it shaped like that. And I'm talking about kids aged nine, seven, five, and two. You know, these are not high schoolers. These are not grades. Well, they are grade school kids, but you know, not somebody that you would expect to be talking about pieces of art like this. So, um, you know, for us, it was really a neat experience. Um, all of the colors, I mean, they ignite the imagination, uh, angles, you know, that are providing a new perspective and not to mention the fact that it is made of steel, just like our product. So obviously it has to be good just for that reason. Um, but more importantly, I think this piece in particular gave an opportunity for my wife and I to have discussions about 9-11 um, and the impact that it had, you know, on all aspects of life, including artwork that was in the area. Um, we were able to talk about the tragedy, but then also about look how, you know, it's made a comeback, it's here, uh, that there's new life being brought into it and it's being able to be shared across the country. So uh, for that, we're extremely thankful that we can celebrate that today. But both Jay and Lynn Rose and Matandi are extremely proud to sponsor tonight's unveiling. Uh, we hope that all of you can start your own conversations about art uh, with this wonderful piece and the history that surrounds it. Um, and I hope that you enjoy it for many months to come. So thank you to Michael. Uh, to Pyramid Hill for restoring it uh, and for uh, the Fitton Center for bringing it here and, and bringing something to this plaza that again creates those conversations uh, for all of us. So thank you. Thank you so much, Matt. We really do appreciate the support that we get um, for all of our sponsors here at the Fitton Center and for the great support we see throughout the community. Um, speaking of support, when we first hatched the idea, gosh, I shouldn't have used that phrase, of the blue baby, um, it really did. I got a phone call on a Tuesday afternoon and uh, I had this phone call saying, I've got this nine foot blue baby coming out of an eggshell, would you like it? And I went, well, I'll have a conversation about it, of course. Uh, and the end of the conversation is good, we can deliver it this afternoon. And um, we got it delivered the next day. So it was, a little, it was an interesting thing to put together. Uh, when the artist arrived, Wolfgang Auer from Germany, and arrived with all his folio, um, I rang Mike Dingledine. And as many of you know, Mike is probably the busiest man in this city, so I don't like to waste his time, but I really wanted him to meet Wolfgang and see the work. Uh, he came down, saw Wolfgang's work, the quality of the work, and this outrageous idea, and bought in the City of Sculpture as a partner, and we really do appreciate that. It's uh, a true partnership, what they're trying to do throughout the city, and we are really incredibly blessed here in Hamilton to have this living sculpture gallery throughout the city, and of course, up on Pyramid Hill, uh, that we have that here and that partnership. Uh, and that has continued through here with Baroque Trajectory. They've been our partners in this, and we're really proud of it. Uh, and we're looking to develop that further. We would like to see this space develop uh, as a, a sculpture space of new sculpture, bringing things in and working with our partners with Pyramid Hill and with Miami to see that travel throughout Butler County. So I'd like to, to introduce you to the president and the chair of the City of Sculpture, Mike Dingledon. Thanks, Ian. I've always said that um, for Hamilton to have any one of these organizations, uh, civic art organizations like we do, is wonderful. Uh, to have Pyramid Hill, to have City of Sculpture, to have uh, Fit and Center. But to have all three of them is really something phenomenal and spectacular. And it's always been uh, our goal as a City of Sculpture to be kind of the first line of public art. Uh, our stuff is outside. You have to drive by it. You have to see it. You have to talk about it. Uh, you can like it. You can hate it. Uh, but what we hope is when we're successful that we cause people to want to go past the threshold of the Fitton Center and to drive up the hill at Pyramid Hill to see more art. 
And so um, we're the first line of reaching out to the community and um, we're also the first line to get criticized for our choice of art. Uh, but I think no matter what you think of art, it's great if it causes conversation in your community. Uh, so for all three of these organizations to be partnering now, uh, to me is fantastic. We love to be a part of that and I think there's no stopping us if we can continue that collaboration. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. Um, I've been very fortunate to have known Sean Higgins before we got our positions, respective positions here. So we've been cooking up some trouble well before we sat behind a desk. Uh, and it's been wonderful to be working with both Sean and Jenny Barton as the co-directors up at Pyramid Hill. Uh, as Mike says, to have uh, organizations like the Fitton Center and Pyramid Hill and City of Sculpture and Art Space and River's Edge and the Symphony Orchestra and, and, and in this city uh, of 65,000 people is quite incredible. I, I say it a lot that we bat well above, our, uh, well above our average anywhere in the country and I'm very, very proud to be a part of that and part of these uh, fantastic collaborators. So I'd like to introduce you uh, to the co-director of Pyramid Hill, Mr. Sean Higgins, and he's going to introduce our guest artist and our storage artist today. Thank you, Sean. Very exciting about collaboration. As uh, Ian mentioned, we've done some things before, and it's ex exciting to work with the Fitton Center as well as with City of Sculpture. They're doing so much. We've been partnering with the Great Miami Valley YMCA for programs. We're very excited about collaboration. And to pause with that word for collaboration, I do want to introduce you to my collaborative partner at Pyramid Hill, Jenny Barton, who is the uh, Director of Programming and Administration. This has been a wonderful collaboration, and I appreciate working with Jenny very much. The uh, working with the Fitton Center and City of Sculpture is just, again, getting it to the next level. One plus one is two, but you know, you can easily add up to three, five, ten, and we appreciate that. I, a lot of thank yous again, Matt. Thank you. We appreciate you making the evening t uh, special tonight. I don't want to. I'll, I just want to introduce some people, so it becomes very redundant if I thank the same people. But we don't want to. I don't want to uh, miss anybody. But we, again, we're very thankful. Uh, I want to say thanks to, to Jason Snyder and uh, the Snyder uh, Construction Company for making it so easy to get this installed because sometimes installations are not easy. This was smooth and we appreciate that. Um, brilliant colors on this piece and uh, Michael Post uh, kept me informed. We were back and forth about the collaboration or about the uh, restoration and he gave me a specific type of paint a specific brand of paint and the specific colors for each paint and said, okay, and you can find these uh, at, in Gary, Indiana. Well, I thought I'd take a chance. So I called Rick Jones at uh, Renaissance Fine Arts here in town. He knew exactly the paint I was talking about, was able to get it for me. So rather than going to Gary, Indiana, I was able to uh, get my paint locally, buy, shop local and get my paint here. So thank you, Rick. <laughs> Special paint. I'd like to introduce also some of the folks that, that uh, the two folks that worked on this. Penny Brooks is uh, it was a member of the uh, a board for the Fitton Center. She's a member of our board currently. She is a patron uh, patron of the arts all over here in Hamilton. Even though she says as she lives in a suburb of Hamilton, that being Cincinnati. Thank you, Penny, for your time on this piece and all you do for the park. The gentleman who did the. Uh, lion's share and the yeoman's job of, of really a lot of this had to be, re, some pieces had to be um, re-welded, ground down, brought back from the finish and did all the painting. He is the uh, head of our groundskeeping crew at Pyramid Hill uh, and responsible for bringing this piece back to life. I'd like to introduce you to Gary Taxis. <laughs> Gary, sp Gary spent a lot of time with this and takes a lot of pride, not only in this, but in all the pieces and uh, how the park looks. So thank you very much, Gary. We appreciate, appreciate your work. And we, uh, you've done a lot. Um, this, is, uh, this has been uh, quite a journey because it came to Pyramid Hill, this piece, Baroque Trajectory, in 2002. I'm not going to go on to the whole story. Uh, I want to let our, our artist take care of that. But Michael Post is originally from Warren County, kind of up in the Carlisle, Franklin area. Went to uh, University of Cincinnati, went to the conservatory, majored in music, and uh, as we said, ended up in sculpture, but still, uh, with his deg degrees in sculpture, uh, degrees in music, still pursues both and combines both, both music and light and sculpture in, uh, in his artistic work, and now is a, a teacher instructor at Pratt Institute in New York City. Please welcome Mr. Michael Post.
Thank you, Sean. And thanks to everyone that's here. I just have a few words I would like to say about this momentous occasion. While on site, cleaning off the ashes that covered this sculpture at Trinity Place in New York City, I looked up and down the street were huge semi-truckloads of twisted I-beams and wreckage coming from ground zero. Load after load, truckload after truckload, to the point where it really galvanized that moment for me as I was looking at those twisted I-beams and the powerful emotions that were going through me, of course, and of course, the entire nation at that point. I realized the magnitude of that moment. And this sculpture that we dedicate today was there. Baroque trajectory was there during the World Trade Center disaster on September 11th, 2001. This moment of realization marked me and my work for years to come. It reminds me of the great novel by Tolstoy, War and Peace, where he is writing the entire novel, flipping back and forth, back and forth between wartime and peacetime, between fancy balls and war battles between families and their relationships with each other and soldiers on the battlefield. Tolstoy takes us through this journey back and forth and back and forth to the point where there is a moment in this novel where you feel this swirling mass of people throughout the world moving and shifting and changing and ebbing and flowing to the point where you start feeling like you are part of that grand scale of humanity, art, and human endeavor. This feeling was how I felt on that moment down at Trinity Place during that disaster time. The materials I use for this piece are steel channels, if you look at one of the sections, you will see they are flat on one side, quite wide, and then they turn up on the edges. That's a piece of channel structural steel. But these pieces were cut pieces that were available in my studio at that time, a rich supply of them. And I started placing them together in these sections, and gradually this piece began to develop into a swirling composition that gives a sense of implied movement. That was one stage of the piece. The next stage was trying to paint it. <laughs> Painting a sculpture, one color is hard enough to get it to read properly. But when you're working with so many different colors, color has a sp spatial sense to it that shifts and changes the spatial composition of the piece. I had to paint it many, many times, many, many different colors and many, many different sections to get the relationships of the colors to work properly with the dynamic form of the piece. And these zigzag serrated edges have always been a certain design that has always appealed to me. Some people like circles, some people like triangles. I like zigzags. I don't know why. It's just part of my my creative process. Another influence was the great Italian sculptor from the 1600s during the uh, Baroque era, Bernini, who I have always admired throughout my education and artistic life. I always come back to certain sculptors that feed me with inspiration, and he is one of them. Two months after the World Trade Center disaster, 
the New York Department of Parks and Recreation, the Downtown Alliance, and the Lower Manhattan Cultural Council decided we needed to have a ceremony and dedication ceremony at Trinity Place for this sculpture. And to highlight the fact that people started to come back down to Lower Manhattan after that disaster to see art. During that dedication, with my musical background, I decided to do a performance on this piece that not only functions as a percussion instrument that I played with hammers and metal rods, working my way around the entire piece, but w in my musical life, I am also a composer, and I compose what I call color music. Color music is a alternative notation system using brilliant colors. So if you looked at one of my manuscripts of my music, it's painted with color, and that's what I expect the musicians to read, not standard notation. The purpose of this was to hook up the colors with the sound of the vibrating metal. It was a perfect match. So this piece is actually a music score and a musical instrument. Now you might say, well, how do the colors hook up with sound? Well, simply laid out, if you think of the dark colors on the bottom, the light colors at the top, I'll just use the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. Blues would be lower tones, slower tempos. Reds would be mid-range, rhythmic. Yellows, high-pitched, and very intense. That's a very simplified way of looking at colors, but just to give you a simple idea of how this all works. Meeting Harry Wilkes was the next step in the trajectory of this piece. I was home visiting my mother, who lived in Warren County, and my mother said, you know, I saw this article in this local paper about this sculpture park, Pyramid Hill Sculpture Park, and we decided, let's go and check it out. So we came to Hamilton, we went to Pyramid Hill Sculpture Park. At that time, they had a tea room, so we were having afternoon tea in their tea room, and my mother turned to me and she looked out of the window and she said, you know, your sculpture would look great on that grassy hill over there. Needless to say, within a few hours, I was sitting in Harry's office talking to him about my piece, Baroque Trajectory, that was on display at Trinity Place in Manhattan. Harry said, do you have a picture of this? And I said, yeah, I pulled out a postcard. On one side was the title and where it was and the dates, etc. He turned the postcard over, looked at the picture of the sculpture. I could tell he had a positive attitude. And then he said, not bad. <laughs> well, if you knew Harry, that was quite a compliment. <laughs> Anyway, a little while later, the piece was shipped out to Pyramid Hill Sculpture Park where it has been on display in a very nice setting. The sculpture now, of course, has a new countenance, freshly repainted and installed here through a collaboration of organizations, the Fitton Center for the Creative Arts, Ian and Kate, Kat, City of Sculpture, Sean Higgins, his crew and staff at Pyramid Hill Sculpture Park, the Mahandy Steel Corporation and the Lynn Rose uh, companies, thank, thank you for your sponsorship. And Gary, thank you for meticulously helping to repaint the piece and make it look so beautiful here. As Harry Wilkes said in an interview for Channel 9 News when the piece just first came to Pyramid Hill, and I quote, it survived. And much like all the people in this nation that are surviving this attack, they are looking at this piece of sculpture and it's bringing back those memories of that attack 
and it means a special something to each person that sees this piece of sculpture. In conclusion, let us remember those catastrophic moments of disaster, but in a new and hopeful light, the light of the brilliance of the colors in this piece, symbolizing that swirling, ebbing, flowing, teeming of masses of people in constant motion, dedicated to those who were lost, but also to those who survive. That we may look to the future with the brightness of the colors of this sculpture. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. We appreciate you being here. We appreciate those touching and moving words. Uh, but most of all, we appreciate you letting us display your art here in Hamilton. It's wonderful to have you back here in southwest Ohio. We will embrace Warren County uh, here at Butler County. It is really a great honor for us. Uh, the history of this is phenomenal. Um, but to have this on display as with this partnership, we are extremely, extremely proud. Uh, thank you again to all our partners uh, here today uh, and to the, the Fearman family. Thank you so much for allowing us to uh, bring out the artist. It just makes it so much more special. We really appreciate uh, that sort of dedication to the community and for us to be, have this strong connection as we display that uh, this, this piece uh, for the at uh, least the coming year. So we're very, very excited about it. Thank you for coming out today. We really appreciate this kind of energy coming into the streets of Hamilton. I know there's lots going on this week. It's been really fabulous. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. We look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you.